Welcome back to the X Podcast. We're excited that you're here with us, and I have two special guests who are joining me at the table, the Putin table. I've got Jared Carr and Kyle Hatfield. What's up, guys? Hey, what's, what's up? happening? Good to be here. Excited to be. This here. is a dream come true for me. Yeah, you're on the podcast. I am on the podcast. <laughs> we uh, we kicked Russ off. Yeah, excited about that. Yeah, yeah, we get kicked him to the curb, and I decided to upgrade. No, I'm just kidding. I just I'm joking. But when it comes to financial advice. Um, I, we wanted to bring in some guys who are really good at it. And so for those of you joining us and you don't come to our church, you're not a part of our faith community, uh, last weekend we ended a series talking about finances, and I had these two gentlemen on the platform with me trying to answer questions that people in our church submitted about finances, financial questions. And so there was a ton of questions submitted. We did not get time to go through a lot of them. And so today we're just going to use this format to have a conversation and see if we can continue to give advice. But just to understand all of the advice that you are getting from the X podcast is free. So take it for what it's worth because they didn't pay us. Do you have a legal disclaimer there? Yeah. Uh, Do you have any legal disclaimers? Um, and I'll, I'll per- past inter- performance and not indicative of future <laughs> no. results. That, that is that. okay. Yeah. So a couple Sounds things good. about, about these guys. And if you guys want to say just a little quick introduction, um, Kyle is a certified financial planner and he is not allowed l- legally or more just ethically or just job, whatever to say where he works. And he's not allowed to give actual specific, specific, specific financial advice. advice. Yeah. Cause if otherwise, you're not sitting across the table from me, like I can't tell yeah. you exactly what to put money into, but otherwise he'd have to kill you. Right. 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 But, right. but you can't do that. But so I, I wouldn't want to do that. So Kyle, that's... what? Why don't you just give a quick little introduction? Just imagine people aren't at church on Sunday and they're hearing you for the first time, and why should they listen to you? Well, uh, 17 years in financial planning, okay. and I've uh, been doing that for quite some time. My family's been attending here. We've helped out with Financial Peace University. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've, there was an old class called I Was Broke, Now I'm yeah, Not. Yeah, Joe Sangle. Remember that? Ooh, Joe Sangle did, that. did a great job. Um, and just generally, I've met with folks that love coaching uh, people with finance. I just want them to win with yeah. money. It's yeah. such a polarizing but it doesn't have to be. It's yeah. such a polarizing topic that you just, just want, them, want them to win. Yeah. I know that's Jared's heart as well. We have yeah. the same heart. Yeah. Jared, how about you? Yeah, so Jared Carr, uh, I am a data analyst by trade, not a formal financial advisor, but I, I do like the title of financial coach. I have been able to help several people, family, friends, coworkers, just kind of navigate uh, personal finance. For me, it kind of started with... Uh, maybe a bad experience, uh, taking a look at some numbers and putting some trust in someone that, that, that maybe took advantage of me. So it was kind of my goal to, to help people kind of, again, navigate the finance, financial world and who better than to do it with, with our church and, and those that, that listen to the X podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So these guys are great guys. They do really have, um, I think they have great insight when it comes to um, financial things, the way they operate their own finances personally, the things that they are involved in. Um, Kyle is someone that I go to for investment and stuff. He helps me. And, uh, and so I think he's fantastic in what he does. And so it's an honor to have you guys on here. And I, I normally like to do a lot of like, you know, we, we have a lot of niceties that we like to do, but we have a lot of questions. And so I just thought this episode, we are just going to dive right into the thick of all these financial questions. So if you guys are ready, yeah, some of these may feel like we're jumping back and forth or similar. If we've already, some of them we answered at church on Sunday. So if you miss and you're not a part of our church, I would encourage you to go to our website, the x.church, go to watch the message series, Money Moves, and week four is our conversation. So you can hear already some of the questions we answered. We, we did a lot on debt a, and a little bit on saving. And so we'll probably not touch on them as much, but we'll try to answer questions. And so hopefully if you submitted a question, we're going to get to it today. So you guys, re- you guys ready to yeah, jump let's in? Do it. Okay. Someone sent in this question. What is the best way to manage and make money as a college student who has bills? What's the best way to manage? Let's just start there because to make money... I mean, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, there's all kinds of jobs. You- well, the greatest gift the college student's going to get is their income. 
So whatever yeah, yeah. they have to do to come out with as little debt as possible there you go. Is, is first. Uh, and their greatest opportunity is that money that they're going to ha- make once they get that job. So I think first, you know, finding a career that's actually going to pay good money. I mean, uh, I've seen college students come out with $75,000 debt and going to have a job paying $35,000. Like that's Oh, they're just called teachers. Not, not in one. <laughs> Jared can speak yeah. to that. His wife is one. <laughs> yeah. right, the right, teachers right. are the ones so, that have to have be great, so well educated and unfortunately don't get paid well. Correct. Correct. So that's part of it. So if you can work just to help pay off some of those debts, yeah. I wouldn't worry as much. I mean, it is great. We talked about it yesterday, like save and invest as early as possible. Yeah. But if you can come out, you've really invested well if you've just gotten out of debt or, or have very low debt when you're coming out of when you're coming out of school. So yeah. everything I'm probably working towards, I might squander off and, and squirrel mm. a little bit of money away. But most of it's like, how can I come out without debt? If you're in a situation where you're not going to have much in the way of debt, yeah, Save start some putting money. some of that in a Roth IRA um, into a, an account that maybe you're going to buy a house early on. Because you, if they're doing that well, they're probably one of those people we talked about yesterday yeah. that might buy a house really yeah. when they're young. Yeah. Um, yeah, for yeah. me, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do uh, in college, but it was something my mom really insisted on. One thing I did know, I wanted to get through as fast as possible and as cheap as possible. That's right. And I that's think smart. that's what a lot of young people need to, to focus on. There are a lot of opportunities for scholarship for, mm-hmm. I mean, if you're in high school, some, some college credit courses you can take. And I think another big thing is to really resist the temptation of your peers. There's this idea that as you move on from high school to college that you've got to um, head off to a, a popular school prestigious, school, prestigious school, and many, many students return back yeah. uh, and, and aren't quite ready to make those kind of big decisions. So yeah. I would resist you know, yeah. the temptation of your peers and, and, and try to get through as cheap as possible. Sometimes the best way to do that is to, is to be too preoccupied and busy with, with a job. You're in school and you're working and you don't have time for, for a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of classes too that they can take in high school. If your student's oh, yeah. not yet in high school, mm-hmm. I mean, they can come out with Sometimes almost an associate's, associate's degree. Some can. And so yeah. you can, I mean, that helps, that helps as well. Yeah. I, I won't add much to that other than I have really strong feelings about this when it comes to college um, and, and bills. I think what you said, Kyle, is some of the best advice. Um, the the greatest goal, you, or greatest gift you can give yourself is to get through college for whatever role, job, if that's if you even need to go to college, uh, with as little debt as possible. Mm-hmm. If you do that, you're setting yourself up. I, I, yeah, I have strong feelings. I don't. I think that most. I'm not gonna say all because I know some people are in some situations. I think most people can get through college without any student debt. I, I think most people, a lot of people, don't want to. Mm-hmm. So I kind of reject this idea that, well, college is so expensive. What else are you going to do? I'm like, you can, I'll give you a quick example. My daughter, my oldest daughter, when she was going to go to school for nursing, and you do have to go to college if you're going to go be a nurse. you got to have a BSN now. And so when she was doing that, we were looking at capital. We were looking at a few places. She liked them. It's very expensive. And uh, my take is I'm not necessarily paying for my kids' college tuition. Some parents want to. That's fine. We'll help as we can, but I don't feel like it's my responsibility. It wasn't, no one paid for it for me. Uh, I got some help from my parents, but I paid for it myself. My wife's, we did it. Um, and, and so I, we, we found that Zanesville branch of OU had a nursing program that was half the price of OU. So it was $5,000 a year to go to Zanesville she already graduated high school with a full year of college done. So she was going in year two. And to go to Capital uh, was something like $35,000 a year. That wasn't staying on campus. That was just tuition. Now, with their ACT score and other things, they, they'll give you they'll give big, disc, big discounts. But it was still going to be about $11,000 a year. I said, if you want to go to this school, it's going to take you three years. Capital was maybe not going to accept her first year of all of college and maybe make her do an extra year. Turns out she probably wouldn't have had to. I said, you might have to go an extra year to school and you're probably going to come out with maybe $40,000 in debt. I said, if you get a job and you're out a year early, that's a swing of about $90,000 or more. Maybe it was more than that. Mm-hmm. She was like, well, I'll go to OU Zanesville. She lived yeah. at home. She drove to OU Zanesville. We helped pay for it. She got scholarships. 
zero debt when she graduated. So y it can be done. Yes. And I know not everybody has the same circumstance. So I maybe not everybody has the same support system that we were offering, even though we weren't paying for it. And so I don't want to assume that for everyone that's maybe listening or watching. But I'm just saying that we were definitely not paying for someone to go to school so that their kids can live on campus and that they could go hang out and party and so that they can do whatever. What most people want is they want to borrow for the college experience. We weren't paying for the college experience. Mm -hmm. Get your education as cheaply as possible. Most, I'm going to say most, every workplace, there may be a few small ones and maybe in medical and other things, do not care what name is on the piece of paper. Agree. They don't. You have to have the piece of paper to get through HR. What's going to get you the job is how well you can interview. I'm just telling you life. Yep. These are facts. I, I mean, I think we, I, I love this topic. I mean, I could spend, I, I could, I, I I could could spend the whole time. You know, I'll get fired up if I, I mean, talk about college. You're an IT guy. You're a pastor. I have a, I was a criminal justice degree. I want to be in the FBI and do white collar crime. I have so a business a, degree and I'm an IT guy. And he's an IT guy. So <laughs> like we, we have these kids who are 18 years old and we expect them to know what they want to do. For I, the rest yeah. Of life. And, and so, I mean, those general studies, I mean, those first couple of years at a, at a Columbus state, that could be worth your weight in gold. I did that. Uh, the trades are coming back. I Dude. Mean, my son is a diesel mechanic. You'll make more money in trades than you my will in college. My son is a diesel degree. mechanic and loves it. Yep. I mean, absolutely loves it. He's passionate about it. He's really good at it. And man, I'll tell you, it's nice Don't. to have a mechanic in the family. Yes. Too. It's <laughs> not a bad thing. Man. Don't, I, I, believe it or not, I've counseled um, kids and parents before when they ask and I say, if you don't know what you want to do, don't go to college. Yeah, nothing wrong yeah. with taking You're, a year off. You are wasting right. money. I went to school as a 25-year-old when I wanted to learn something with a bunch of 18 and 19-year-olds that mommy and daddy was paying for college, but they actually didn't want to be there, and they weren't learning a thing. Yeah. And they were skating by, maybe. And I was like, this is a waste. Get an education when you need an education to move forward in your career. So anyways, that's yeah. way more than probably what they yeah. were asking. Maybe we won't have to answer other ones. We better move on. Yeah. The company I work for is closing, and I'm planning – to open my own business, what do I do with my 401k? I want to continue investing. I'm not going to speak to this. I'm just going to pass it to you, Kyle, first. And Jared, if you have something otherwise, sure. we'll just move on. Well, if you, if you can not spend the 401k, that would be ideal because you're going to face, unless you're 59 and a half, you've got some taxes and penalties coming at you. So yeah. I would just... Um, they said they're going to start their own business. They're going to start right? their own business. Okay. They're, not, they're not even saying, do I spend it? They're just yep. saying, I think they have a 401k with a company yep. that's theirs, and now they're leaving the it, company, and they're saying, what do I do with it? So you, it can stay in that yep. 401k. So we're getting into fiduciary land where I have to be a little bit careful. Like, yeah. it can stay in that 401k. You've got some options. You can cash it out, which is probably not the most ideal. Yeah. You, can, you can keep it in the 401k at that same company unless they're making you leave it. Or you can roll that into a traditional IRA, typically, is what is what, yeah. is what what um the average and some person person would does. He, I know do. what you're right, saying. Right, he cannot right, say right, right, you should right, do this. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, I can step in if you don't want yeah, to. Yeah. You, if, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What would Jared, Jared do? do? <laughs> what would Jared so, do? So, uh, funny story. At Christmas, I had a uh, someone show me their uh, brokerage account, and they had a stock from a company that they previously worked for. Just like one single stock of this company. And they said, "What do I do with this?" And I, I helped them kind of cash it out. And then I looked at a an IRA that they had rolled over. Um, from that previous employer. And I was a little nosy. So I did a little digging and learned that this, we're talking over $100,000 in IRA money, was just in a cash settlement count for the last four or five years. So, so not earning anything. So not earning anything. anything. And, and I this had to do the to math. 23. It yeah, I had to do the math. Anything. And it would have been worth $275,000. Ouch. Now, now I would never share those details. I'll let that person figure that out for themselves. But, you know, it's one thing to have money invested or into a, an, an, an account, but then it's taking that next step and making sure it's yeah. invested somewhere. Yeah. The, the yeah. only piece I'll add to this is I screwed this up as when I finally wised up and went to Kyle. Um, I'm just going to tell you, you need to go see a financial planner, someone like Kyle. It could be Kyle or someone like him. There's so many different agencies mm -hmm. out there. Um, uh, I'm biased to Kyle, Kyle just because I make know a him. Pitch for a fiduciary. Yes, I, I just I made the mistake of leaving a retirement sitting. Well, it's more than that now, but 14 years later, just leaving one sitting 14 years later and sitting down and going, should I have moved this 14 years ago? Oh yeah, you should have moved it 14 years and then did move it, and had lost 14 years of earnings on this. Mm -hmm. So, 
in several more years, I just may have lost a million dollars. I mean, it's always possible yeah, in earning I, potential. I would love so. to emphasize the fiduciary piece. Yeah. If you are a um, public servant, and can you just explain a fiduciary first? Because I think sure. some people, I think sometimes we understand and maybe think in financial terms, but all of us have kind of worked in it. I used to work in it in the federal government, and so we do, but maybe other people don't. So I don't want to just assume. Like, so my understanding is that it's someone that has your interest, your best interest in mind. Yeah. They're not out to um, earn a commission like a sales room, like a salesman. Now, the firm that they might work for certainly um, will, you know, it's part of their business model, but um, it's someone that ultimately has your best interest in mind. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're going to get compensated. Yeah. I mean, it's their yeah. job, right? So, but the fiduciary is, is held to a higher standard. You are a fiduciary. They have to, yes. Right. So you have to, you have to do what is right for the client and put their interests ahead of your own. There are folks who claim to be financial advisors and then they're out just for yeah. to get you to invest with them to do. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and there's some great folks in that realm. I mean, I don't want to like paint it with a broad brush, but also they're not held to quite, quite the standard. So, okay. yeah, good. Yep. Let's go on to another one. I think these are good. This one has a lot of layers. I don't, we can just hit them all. I think maybe give some general thoughts or advice at 25 years old. How much should I have in savings? I think it's a loaded question. That's part of it. That's a loaded question. I think we talked about saving money. I just want to pause real quick. We talked about saving money. Um, we recommend at least an emergency fund if you're in debt. If you're not in debt, you should be building that. And even if you are, but I, you should be, once you're out of debt, you should be building that to probably three to six months living expenses. Um, again, that's, we're still talking about emergency. And then we talked about having a purpose for saving. You should then start in my opinion, start saving for specific things, even outside your budget. Mm, yeah. Saving for future purchases, saving for trips, saving for your kids' expenses, saving for, like, that's kind of a loaded question to me. I, I don't think there's this ideal, well, you just have $100,000 sitting in an account somewhere. And you would suggest, don't do that. Have enough for your, if you're not going to spend the money in the next two years, it should go into investment. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, I'm going to move on to the rest of this question, but I just wanted to recap kind of what we gave as general advice based on last yesterday. How do I begin to afford a house? Should I be budgeting every dime I spend or just make sure what's going out doesn't exceed what's coming in? Why is budgeting so difficult and time consuming? Can, the dreaded uh, there's a word. lot in you, that one. I know. Yeah. We, we've got to re-answer the question yesterday. So what's this wine app, wine app. <laughs> that we've heard about? So wine much. app. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Tell us about that, Jerry. <laughs> yeah, if if there were subtitles, it might come across as wine hamburger, wine nabber, wine nab. Uh, wine nab is an acronym for you need a budget. You need a budget. Y N A B, not y -N -A -B. wine. A B, as in W I N E. We had a person yesterday. We're not whining like, like W H I N. Do, is this wine app? Why I. You drink, drink wine. wine while I'm doing my budget because it's so painful just to this. Some people might want to drink a glass of wine while doing their budget. I, mean, I understand gonna, that. You know, we're in a church. We may not. Wine ab, but not wine app. app. So, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. And, and what makes wine ab unique <laughs> is that it forces you to budget money that you actually have. Where a lot of other budgeting apps allow you to kind of forecast what's coming in and budget that accordingly. No, it kind of it forces you to budget the money that you currently have in a bank account and it could be multiple accounts yeah and actually it needs to be multiple yeah. accounts if you have them because i figured that out which is why i was having such a hard time mm -hmm. yeah it, it, it helps <clears throat> with the tool yeah it helps multiple accounts use one one budget for all your accounts including your credit card and including see this including is where i was struggling accounts. with this particular tool i was using i've used rocket money i use back in the day it was microsoft money I used that a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, before that, it was balancing a checkbook and there was no such thing as, <laughs> you know, I didn't, you know, when I started out. But that's one of the ones that I really found we, we that have was hard. One, we have one central account where everything flows from. So if I have a credit card bill, you know, I, if I travel or something, a lot of times I'll put that, like, on credit, you know, I'm not, right. I, I like credit cards. They're not bad. Just pay them off, like yeah, you alluded right. to yesterday. But um, everything kind of flows in that. And then it, all it does is after the transaction happens one or two days later after it clears the bank, 
you'll get a notification. It's like, hey, you spent three thousand dollars on three hundred twenty-seven dollars on uh, at Kroger. Is that go to groceries? Yeah, that but goes, you need to tie to into Kroger. your credit card to see that. Well, the credit card would just be one bill then that comes in. Like, hey, I paid off because then at the end of the month, when you pay two thousand two hundred and seventy-two dollars on your credit card because yeah. you put everything on there, you'll pay that out of your checking. Sure. And then it's going to say, where does that two thousand two hundred seventy-two dollars go? Yeah. Oh, that goes to credit card. And then you've already put twenty two hundred. You've set that aside. So that's so, how you're doing it. Yep, flowing but out of your checking. Account. I think that's okay. That's what I was. We'll talk about this offsite because I, yeah. I want to ask because I still thought it was really hard. There's some other reasons why I want to do something a little different, but in in the way I'm set up for taxes and other things. But um, I was talking to somebody else who said that what they found even more helpful. I, maybe it's the same thing, and I might be speaking a different language. Was they link their credit card so that every credit card transaction comes in, and they could categorize every credit card transaction. And I know you can do that. Not just, a single. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. lot. It's more work that way. Yeah. But it, yeah, yeah there, it, I found it kind yeah. of challenging. That's when I actually have, what I do. Okay, that's in what fact, I'm and, and that's that. what has actually helped me maximize yeah. points and cash back okay. by using credit cards without overspending because you're budgeting it still. treats it like cash yeah it treats those transactions like cash yeah because i have to have the cash mm -hmm. to pay off that credit card but it but it tracks those credit card purchases yeah and then when the money is spent at kroger on x number of dollars it moves it from that category up to my credit card payment category so the money is there. So when it's time to pay off that balance, yeah. it's, it's already there's there's a lot of ways of yeah. setting them up. Yeah. And I think one of the, the best advice I would give you, if you're even this person, you're listening. Um, this is where I think a like we all try to offer through the church and through the, is it like a personal financial coach or somebody who can help you mm -hmm. with that. I, I think the why is budgeting so difficult and time consuming? It, it is not easy. It doesn't have to be once you have it set up and working. Would you guys say that? Yeah, and it's going to yeah. take. It takes it time. Takes you three gotta, or four months. It takes five months to like does. really get a. Uh, and a, no budget ever perfect. I mean, no, still even sure. to this day, I still like. Oh, I didn't expect this to happen. You know, and it's you hard to really. But, I'm, you need oil change. You need new tires. You need this. You got to change your timing belt in ten years. You got to. You know what I mean? And it's I like know. you talked about that, Jared. Like you, you, you have like. Yeah, people. I mean, why do people want to set it and forget it. Like they want to log in, set it, and yeah. forget it. Well, that's not the point of budgeting. The point of the budgeting is is to be hands on, especially in the first few months. You got to see where money's coming in, where it's going out, and you know, get your averages of what you're spending on, and you know, you've got to be involved. A little bit every yeah. day. I mean, I'm yeah. in my budget for five minutes every day. Every day. And I would say that I'm, w mm -hmm. w you know, yeah. winning with with money. I'm ahead. Does yeah. does and I do X it Church has a budget, right? They keep oh, a budget. Yeah. Apple probably keeps a budget. Yeah, sitting on why, billions why? of dollars in cash. <laughs> not at, not us. Talking about Apple. <laughs> Apple. We don't have it. That'd be amazing. Uh, Emily Bucks. Anyway, that's, 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 that's for tomorrow. inside joke. Um, no, we, th but yeah, why, we were no different. I think we should have a budget too, just like companies do yeah. as well. God's yeah. given us this money. Totally agree. It wisely. They asked. I want to move on to the next one, just so we can keep going because we had a lot. How do I begin to afford a house? Get a budget. That'll help you. Start saving. Um, you can start saving for a house, and I think that. You know, if it's your first house, there's like down payment. Uh, you know, yeah. you can get some money for down payment. There's so seek, seek a good mortgage yeah. person at yeah. that point. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, mm -hmm. Someone asked this. It's a debt one. I, I, I don't know if we're good at answering this or not. It says with nearly a hundred thousand dollars in debt, and I'm assuming we're talking consumer debt mostly, and it doesn't sound like it's uh, protected debt or based on an asset. Um, mostly student loans and recently charged off credit cards due to a job loss and not even being able to afford to buy food after paying housing expenses. How can I eliminate my debt without filing chapter 13? Mm. And uh, I want to just say I'm, this is a tough situation. I, my heart goes out to this person. I think you're losing a job and, and you can, this is why we do, preach often about having an emergency fund you can have an emergency fund lose a job and it's still not being like it could be hard depending on what your work line is and job um there are things i think you can do if you're laid off you lose a job quickly if you can't find the job you really want um and so i always encourage people to like you know i, I don't want to sit around and just put out 
things and feelers if I have a unique thing and wait two, three months to go, I just hope someone calls me. At some point, I'm just going to go try to knock on doors and find a job in the interim. But um, I, I, on this, about it, I mean, this is a, it seems like they're in a very difficult situation because of their debt. And I think, mm -hmm. to me, the first step, I, I would encourage you to try to do this without filing bankruptcy because I, yes. as a follower of Jesus, I find bankruptcy a really hard decision to make. Um, I want to pay back my debts. Now, there are ways that when you're in really difficult situations with debt counseling, there are ways that you can consolidate debt. That might be something I, I would look at as either a debt consolidation or getting a reduced payment. Yeah. But I, you really need to build your income. I want to, would want to see how this is all broken down. Yeah. Um, when I look, I'm going to guess that the majority of that is student loan. Yeah. And I think... If there's one area that's a little more lenient and, mm -hmm. and, and almost sometimes forgiving, it's, yep. it's student loans. So I think you can buy yourself some time yeah. there. If, if it's an, a medical it's expense. It's a credit card mostly. It said just you know, basically it said credit card. Yeah, like emergency medical, I have a bit more grace yeah, there. Help but too. consumer debt, credit cards, mm -hmm. a car note, that's where you got to start making some tough decisions, whether it's selling a car, whether it's working with creditors to, to come up with some sort of plan. I have experience working with someone who ultimately, and this was against my recommendation, filed Chapter 13 bankruptcy, and I can tell you they went right back to yeah. where they, they, they came from. So I don't, I don't right. see that as, a, as an option, really. No. Yeah, this is a habit change. I mean, I feel, you know, you just feel heartbroken for these situations and and but as you said you know and it's it's not fun to be in this situation yeah. there's how do you get out i mean working is going to be another yeah. piece of it i mean yeah. you're Frankly. gonna have to just uh you're gonna have to get a bigger shovel <laughs> i was just gonna <laughs> say to start your biggest tool for getting out of debt is your income mm -hmm. you, you need to figure out how to increase your income and sometimes that means you know not one job but maybe is there a way to pick up extra money yeah. With a budget, it's you are you're. I mean, it's how do you move a big pile of dirt one shovel at a time, one mm -hmm. scoop at a time, right? You're right. you're gonna have to probably work your way out. If I, I can get a backhoe and make good money. Well, you, know, you get a backhoe, make, yeah, right? It's you're gonna a move quicker. faster, right? So, I yeah. I do. Um, that's hard. I feel bad it's, for anybody in this yeah. situation. And it seems like they had a job loss. Um, I think what we you want to try to do is learn from this situation, and as you work your way with increasing your income and getting yourself back into a, a more stable position really right. think about trying to build up an emergency fund of trying to have mm -hmm. eventually three to six months so that you don't end up in this place. Cause yeah. Jared's right. Um, a lot of times with school debt, they'll work with you mm -hmm. and it, it won't affect you too horribly. So that's, it's a tough situation. I don't, there's not an easy yeah. answer. I'll mm -hmm. just say that. Mm -hmm. I, or I would just buy a bunch of lotto tickets every week and pray and hope for the best. <laughs> There's that. I'm just kidding. I, that was that. not my advice. There's I was that. just saying. Vandal. I bet it's tempting, <laughs> but okay. Yeah. No, uh, next question. Someone said this, um, and I don't know if I understand if there's an actual document called this. Um, I'm, about, I'm about ready to take the next step with my girlfriend, and we're going to get married. So awesome. Congratulations. Congratulations. When it comes to finances, should we combine all our assets or is – and then this is all hyphenated. Sign if I can't, the better option. I got to be honest. Pleading ignorance. I've never heard sign if I can't. Can I Google that? Can you Google quick? that real quick? <laughs> I should have looked. I didn't. We're just, we're just sitting down with the questions. I will speak to this. I, I personally have a strong feeling, and, and other people may differ. I have a strong feeling that when you're getting married, that the scriptural definition is to becoming one. I think it's really hard to become one but keep your finances separate. I have counseled a lot of people in pre-marriage counseling, and I have pretty much said when we've talked about it, and if they want my opinion, I would count, I think two separate accounts when you're married is a recipe for disaster. Some maybe can do it. I've heard of some people. So if you have, great. Here's what I, I find can go wrong, especially if both people don't make the same amount of money. Mm-hmm. 
Um, if you don't make the same amount of money, but you keep your own separate accounts, but then you have a shared account and you're both going to put some money in to help pay the bills and you're going to go, well, you make more money, so you should put in more money than I should put in there to help pay the bills. Or you have a situation where you decide you guys want to have kids and, well, your wife's the one who actually has the kid and your wife's the one who has to figure out what it's going to do for work situation. It's going to change, but you're going to get this and then her pay is just cut by 60, 40% because she's on you know leave and just ability and she's making less money and all of a sudden you got more money so you can go spend and buy what you want but she can't go and spend and buy what she wants because she has to help pay the bills just like you do and now i'm saying no but i've seen this (laughs) i know where this goes this is not a good road this is not good for marriage yeah so i unless you guys have a different opinion i'm always going to say no you have become one you need to combine your assets and you combine your liabilities by the way yes yep so if one of you has debt now you both have debt. You married. You him. need to know what you married. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know if you saw sign if I can't. Is that no, is that a prenup? Si- sign if I can't is just significant broken up into four words. So I don't know if it's a play on words like uh-uh. a, like Sig, a nif, it can't like a prenup or something. <laughs> um, but I, if it's a prenup, <laughs> don't, I will say this: prenups are a little bit different. There's a variety of different prenups. Mm-hmm. I think in most situations a prenup is probably not necessary. However. I, I do have exceptions, I think, for that. I think somebody that's been, I think two people that are grown that maybe were married in the past, that you have quite a bit of assets you've built on your own in different situations. Mm-hmm. You're now coming and you got divorced and your your spouse died and then you come together and you're in your 50s and you've kind of built two different lives together or life separately um, and then you're merging them. I, I don't know that I'm opposed to a prenup because where I have seen the dynamic get really sticky is when each person, as they're older, has their own family and kids and mm-hmm. heritage and legacy, and then there, there's a combining, and it can potentially cause trouble mm-hmm. in blended situations, especially if the kid's are already older. Yeah. I, yep. I've seen some of that become drama. And so I think sometimes maybe an agreed upon prenup, but not in the sense that we're not going to merge our lives together, but might might be wisdom. You guys think that's bad or no? Yep. you agree? I, I agree. agree. Okay. Yep. I, other than that, I don't know what that is. So that's just, I have strong one, opinions One thing on the, the combined accounts thing, I've worked with uh, couples, married couples, that recently combined accounts. And I think 95% of your your budget, your income, needs to be in one account working together. One area of compromise I think I'm okay with is if you want to have a separate checking that you that you automate a couple hundred dollars to for each month personal. for personal. I don't even want to think about what he's spending money on. Yep. It's too hard to keep track of his hobbies type of thing. Yep. Uh, I'm okay with that. As long as you see the money going out of your accounts and there's no questions as to where money, yeah. you know, where, and it's uh, a small amount. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's for, it's the difference of like the Dave Ramsey, the old envelope system. It'd yeah. be like, this would be your envelope of cash and your envelope of cash. And this is your spending money. So you can enjoy your you money. Want to buy a gift and you surprise want to be able to do stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I I could see that, but I think that's different than than doing the other model, which I mentioned, right. which is we all pitch money to an account to help pay the bills. Yep. I, I don't I don't think that's a I don't think it's a recipe for a good outcome. Okay, here's another one. If I am earning cash income for our home, should I pay taxes on it? Yes. Yes. Moving on. Next Next question. question. (laughs) (laughs) We have no other answer. Do you think I should continue to tithe each month despite it being from Social Security disability check? Yes. 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 I mean... Okay. Let me give you... I, I think sometimes when people ask questions like this, I wonder, and I don't know, I, I am trying to read... I'm trying to understand the question and really read, like, mm-hmm. what, what are you asking? And I wonder if some people maybe think, well, if I paid into something and I tithed on it, and now I'm... Because I think it's an interesting question. Did they tithe think, on their gross, okay, well, gross earlier? Well, Did they tithe well, on, on their gross early on? No, because no, because money that you pay in for Social Security to get back is actually a pre-tax thing. Well, I guess it would still be potentially okay, gross. Yeah. Be, it, you know. I, I think when you start getting down to splitting hairs like that, I think you just need to trust the voice of God and what mm-hmm. you can do. I, 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 think, I think Scripture kind of really indicates more than anything it's on your increase. Things were maybe a little simpler in understanding how... Because mm-hmm. there's, 
there's the same thing with investments, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, here's what I hope that I can do. I hope that I can put away money in investments, that I can give a tithe to God on the gross, and I hope I'm in such a good place, and I understand this is Social Security and disability. Mm -hmm. I hope, and I never know, it could be the thing, to be able to give more on retrieving that disability. But I also understand if you gave on the gross and you're you know, withdrawing disability, I mean, maybe technically, I will say this, and this is just, so I don't know if this fits. And so I'm trying to give a little bit of nuance to this one question, because mm -hmm. I think we all feel if it's an increase that you give on it. Um, I, maybe you guys feel differently and you call the pastor out for this. I have traditionally not given a tithe on any potential tax refund from the government. And partially because when you get a tax refund from the government, it's because you overpaid and I give more a tithe on mm -hmm. my gross and beyond. I would agree. Okay. That's yeah. just, that's just, yeah. that's been my position. That's a great example. That's my position. No, I tithe on my yeah. gross. And so when I get a t refund because they're going, you overpaid, I already did. And right. I, and I feel freedom, you know, to not see that as increase. That's be, be at peace, Pastor. Okay. Well, that's fine. I just wanted to I want to throw that out there because I don't want to be dogmatic. I just I yeah. don't want to be the kind of person, Pastor, that's like super no, you need to talk. It's like I, I want to understand the spirit. Well, that was just the difference between what, you tax withholding, you changed it from, you know, two kids to one you know, did you yeah. do all that right? So yeah, that, yeah, that, that has nothing would, to do with yeah, it. And yeah, so yeah. I just want to I want to speak to the spirit of what we see in scripture of really bringing to God the first versus like being legalistic in it. And so I, I'd say if you can, I would. I do think that if you are able to do that, I think God will take care of your needs as well in this situation. Well, and in Social Security, too, to answer this question, there is a little bit of increase from the government. There is growth on it's that It's just money. hard to know what allegedly, that is because yeah, I, allegedly yeah, it's, it's hard, hard to know. To know. It but, really is. It's, yeah. Yeah. I just don't want to be dogmatic. I just say, you know, however you feel God leading you on that, I said just respond to that and be, you know. Uh, someone asked this, I'm a first-time investor who does not like to take many risks with finances. What would be the best way to get into the market and what is the best platform to use? Uh, anyways, I, you guys <laughs> might, you might want to speak. I mean, you, you can't give too much, probably you could give your own personal advice on this if you, you do a lot of personal investing. It sounds like, and I'm reading between the lines, this person wants to get into investing their own money. And if someone is saying that, what would you give for advice? Because you do it. Yeah, so I would choose a brokerage account. Uh, Vanguard is one I've used. It's great. Fidelity is another one that's great. Schwab. There's a lot of great options out there. Um, and then I would open an account with a, a dollar amount I'm comfortable with. And then I would, I would really start to automate that process. I think the sooner you get it automated, the sooner it's coming out of your check, the sooner you're going to forget it's coming out and it starts to build. And that, so are that, you saying automate like saving to invest? You're yes. taking money out of your checking account, yes. putting it into your brokerage account so you have more money to invest with? Yes. Okay. Dollar cost averaging. You're taking a little bit of money every month and putting it into the market. Once you get your, your account set up, then you've got to choose an investment uh, to put your money into. Uh, the, the fun thing might be to, s to select an individual stock, a company that you're a fan of, uh, a company that you use, uh, a meme stock. Um, that's kind of where the, the, the temptation is, is to get in and pick a stock and go with it. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I just think when you're first starting out, the safest thing is to diversify. Go with an index fund. The S&P uh, is a great place to start. And, yeah. Do you want anything? Um, no, Jared, I mean, this is a great answer. I answer it in much the same way. I think the one caveat to that question is that person said, I want to take, what was the phraseology, a very little risk. It says, uh, who does not like to take many risks. It, to me, if you don't like to take risks with finances, why wouldn't you go see a financial planner or someone and start, and they'll help you get a 401k or an IRA or yeah. something set up, and they'll manage it. Let yeah. me ask you this. I don't know why. Let me ask you. Let me push back just a tad. Mm -hmm. it, I, I, and, and you could put this to bed for me. I always felt like you had to have a certain amount before 
an ad- an advisor would talk to you. Like, it's not worth not, their time not, and energy to talk to true. someone yeah. who's just now getting started, putting their first hundred bucks into the into a brokerage account. No, not, not yeah. true. No, I mean, I mean, some may not. Yeah, it just depends on the person and the, the advisor and what they're trying to yeah. do. And I wasn't necessarily saying they even had to talk to someone in that way. I mean, they can. YouTube yeah. University is great. I just think they need to understand what the risk is yeah. that they're taking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and just if they're young and just kind of be okay with, I mean, the hardest thing is, is we like, we look at it all the time. A lot of people, I mean, even to this yeah. day, they look at it every day. Yeah. And, it takes a lot know, of time and energy. It, it does. And then you're watching it and it went down that day. And so you're, you're like, Oh, I better get out. And then know, it goes up and you're like, you Oh, this is it. great. You know? So I, I always, the analogy I give is like, you know, if you drive into California, do you stop every milepost and make sure you're still heading the right way? No, you just yeah. keep driving. And yeah. so it's almost ign- don't set it forget it right. but like let it do its thing it's it's time time yeah. is your biggest ally with 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 when you're yeah. investing good i think if you're just getting started and you want to do your own investing i think you have to understand this is just my take you have to understand and this is the risk be okay with anything you invest you're going to lose if you're going to do it on your own you better mm-hmm. be okay with anything you invest you could lose I mean, the goal is that you wouldn't, Mm -hmm. and hopefully, I think education makes a huge difference here. You need to be educated. You need to know some other people, get in a community of people and talk to people about it, pay attention. Um, My my brother had to change careers due to a major accident, and he is investing money every day. He's on, Mm -hmm. he's literally doing trading. That's Mm -hmm. his new job. Mm -hmm. He gets up early in the morning before the stock market opens, and he does it during the day. And he's doing it with large amounts of money that he's just, you know, like building and doing. Mm -hmm. And he's done really well, but he's he's kind of an abnormal person. He's really intelligent. He is spends a time. I mean, Hmm. what I'm saying is the amount of time he is spending on studying this, understanding it. And it's done it just for the last year pretty heavily. um, It's a lot. If you don't put yeah, some energy it's, into it's, it, it's it's a dangerous risk potentially. Unless you just go in something that's yeah. like Apple or something that you know a tech stock that you like, you just put it in there and you just watch it. I don't know if that's because if you're asking that, mm-hmm. then there's some safer things sure. out well, there. The, how many companies are in that index that you might have mentioned? Five hundred. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and there's probably some pretty, pretty good companies in you there. You get right? a little bit of Nvidia right now. I yeah. can't yeah. say or confirm or deny. He cannot. That companies, you but, cannot. But there's pretty good We're, stuff. You in can't there. say anything. I don't want you to get in trouble. No. Um, I'll move on. If I'm a college stu- I, I feel like we kind of answered this, so I don't know if we have to stop here much. If I'm a college student, what should I be doing right now to set myself up for financial success later in life? Don't go into debt. Yes, right? That's great job. Number one. Get a job that... What? A great job. Well, okay. A, a job that, like... Gives you purpose. That gives you purpose. Yeah, like and, being and a teacher. That, yeah, exactly. Yes. I'm just saying, it might not be a... <laughs> A great job. Well, no, I'm not saying, necessarily like, fine, don't but overpay for great the job pension. that you're going to get. You know, don't go to a college that doesn't help you. Like, yeah. you know, with you, know, yeah. you don't want to have a job yeah. that's going to pay you thirty five thousand. You come out with one hundred and fifty. Yes, don't do that. that. Don't do that. Don't do that. St- okay. Try. I would say no, little to yeah. no debt. Yep. Um, I would say start saving something for retirement. Compound yes. interest. Do not wait, and that's what most people do. I had someone tell me that. I kind of listened. I kind of didn't. And I'll put mm-hmm. a little bit in there. Mm-hmm. I'm now at my age. Where now I'm going, I wish I had really yeah. been more aggressive back then. Mm. Compound interest, start saving, match. with We talked about all this stuff. Mm. Match. If your company, if you work somewhere and they give you a match, take full advantage of that. Save for emergency fund. Get your emergency fund and start saving for other things that you want to do and build and, and increase your retirement. And then I would say get into when you're ready, because you all are pushing back and going, you're telling people too young to get into a house because they don't. <laughs> I had a lot of pushback of people going, oh, because you could do it. That well, okay. Yeah, if those you're rapid immature fire and not ready, then that's fine. Trouble, yeah, I'm just saying. Be, I say, I would say get into a, get yourself into a house so you're paying toward a principal on something that you own that hopefully is appreciating as quickly as you can. The, the only pushback I had on the house thing, the reason I answered it when I did, is because we know that. Oftentimes, when you get out of college, you change jobs. Affair. You know, you're kind of sure. trying to find your footing. Yeah. And the greatest thing for a, a college or a freshly out of college student is is mobility. Mm-hmm. And when you're trying to like buy and sell a house all the time, you know, that's yeah. that can kind of get you in trouble. It if could. you if you find the job, you come out of college, you're like I'm going to be here for a while. <laughs> 
I would yeah. totally agree. I mean, that's right. a 22. But that's a 20. Yeah, if you, went to, if you went to school right out of high school, you might be 22 and graduated and graduate, your job. Um, but if you're like, well, I might be at this job for a minute, and then I'm going to go to that one, that, you might want to rent for yeah. a bit. So yeah. that, that's what, that was my whole that's point. point. So, yeah. That's a good point. And, and point. don't celebrate by running out and getting a new car either. Yeah. Don't but get that, a new house and a new that's car. That's a big mistake. I think it's a great point because what people don't understand is you get out of college and the first thing that somebody wants to buy is a car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they're a year later going, or maybe they're getting married, they're going, we want to buy a house. And you're going, well, you know, that fits into your ratios, like your debt to income mm -hmm. ratio. Mm -hmm. Like now you're going to approve for a house and they're going, how much is your debt? Well, I got this payment and I got this payment on this payment. Oh, well, that just reduced the amount of house that you can buy because mm -hmm. you can't afford it. Yeah. Right. I would tell people, try to get the house first. Then, as you can, get the car. Don't do it the other way around. Yeah, like, the, the, the thing is, the, the American dream is to, to get a car, mm -hmm. to get a house, have kids, and then spend the rest of your life paying, paying all that off. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the American dream, go for it. So, it's, I think there are better ways to live, and there's an order to this stuff, and it yeah, does make a sure. difference. So, yep. okay, here's a, a, um, a question. Um, they, I don't know if I understand all of it, but it could just be me and you probably would, both of you. How do we get a tax-free retirement account, pension that was used before, other than a 401k or Roth IRA that people used to have before 401ks? I, I got to be honest. You can look at the one that was number 17 on the list. I don't know what they're asking. Yeah, How do we get a tax-free retirement account? So that would be a Roth yeah. IRA, right, where the growth isn't taxed. Correct. Pension that was used before, other than 401k or Roth IRA that people used to have before 401ks. This person had something before a 401k. Well, here's what I would say, and I don't know if I'm reading this right. If you invested into a pre-tax uh, in retirement, you cannot switch it to a tax-free or a Roth-based retirement. Is that correct? You can. You can. But it's, well, then it's a Roth conversion. Backdoor. It's a Roth conversion. You're going to pay it then. But you're going to pay taxes on, on it then. Yes. And you're going to pay taxes on it while you don't get to have the income to pay the taxes on it, correct? You're going to pay it when you trans. You, you want to have, you, what you, I think what you're asking is you want to have the cash outside of the account to pay for the taxes. That yes, that's yep, what I'm saying. Yep, yep. Or you so have to do a withdrawal and you're going to get penalized. Correct. Yep, so, yep, yep, yep. so it's so probably you've got not a better idea. In, a, idea. in an IRA and you want to convert it to a Roth, you'll pay taxes on that 100000 And a penalty. You won't pay a penalty. Okay, so you won't. That's what I was asking. But like, let's say you let's say you paid twenty percent taxes on that. So you're going to owe twenty thousand dollars on that conversion. You would want to probably have the twenty thousand sitting or, right here. Or if you take the twenty out, you're, then you're going to. That's what I was trying to say. Bad. I was saying you if correct. you don't have the cash, you got to withdraw yeah. it. You're going to yeah. take a penalty. It yeah. really doesn't seem like a great move, if you ask me. I would just leave it and start it, a Roth. Depends on age, and there's a lot of okay. things that go into it. And go see it a financial on the plan. amount. Go too. see a see yeah, a financial CDH. planner. Yeah based on it and then they also said unless you have another part to answer because I, I wasn't really clear what they're asking that's why i said i'm unsure they said also is a judiciary investor the best type to find fiduciary i thought they were saying fiduciary I I, that's why i was yeah. like guys i may not know this if they're asking fiduciary i would understand mm -hmm. Um, and how do we find them locally? Well, I know a good one. His name is Kyle Hatfield, uh, and he might have other people, and he can't probably solicit. Yeah, C a CFP has to be a fiduciary, certified yeah, yeah, financial, financial planner. planner. Um, yeah, I mean, they're going to they're gonna tell you. you, you you'd kind of just, you can ask them, you know, interv yeah. interview yeah. some folks and, and ask your friends who, who have somebody that they trust. I think word of mouth is big. Word of mouth is good. Yeah. And then, someone you like. It, but an advisor would have to tell you, are you fiduciary or you're not a fiduciary? Yeah. They'd have to answer that yeah, question. Yeah, I had someone ask me, uh, how, how can I trust my financial advisor? Is he my financial advisor? I said, where is he? What bank? She told me. And the answer could be yes. You know, I don't know this guy. Yeah. Or it could be no. Run and find someone yeah. else. Like, so mm -hmm. it's word of mouth is outstanding. Yeah. And yeah. I think, you know, for someone like myself who, who finds an interest in 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 the market and in, and in, in, uh, investing, I think there comes a point for all of us that yeah. it's time to consult a professional, professional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to make sure, um, because you can't go back in time and fix things. And time time is, is everything time is when everything. it comes to investing. Okay. I, another question that I think I could probably answer quickly and we can move on. Cause I think we still have like 12 more questions or at least, and we're 50 minutes in. So we, we're going to go quicker. 
Uh, what does the Bible say about where to tithe to? Does it specify that we need to tithe to the church, or could we tithe in the community to a family in need with a tenth of our income? Um, scripture makes it really clear that the tithe was brought to the house of the Lord. Malachi 3.10 says, bring the tithes and the offerings into the house of the Lord that there may be food in my house. Um, the church, the temple would be used to take care of people that were needing and other things. Um, you see over and over the idea that your tithe is given to the Lord, and I believe in that, in your place of worship. I, I believe that specifically a tithe should go to your place of worship. If you are have a community that, understand this, if you have a community that you're receiving from, that your kids are receiving from, you are, I, I think sometimes people don't understand this, the church doesn't get funded by the government. The reason the church community can operate as a community and serve each other, and the reason why we have staff, and the reason why I have the ability to prepare messages to deliver, and the reason why is because people bring their tithes to their worst place of worship, and it uses to help pay for the place of worship mm -hmm. where you receive. So to me, that's real clear. Now, what I'd say is, um, I, I, if there's a family in need, we as a church like to help. So why don't you, there's, I mean, whether it's things we can do specifically, we also have a ton of resources we can point people to. And the other thing I would caution you about just going, well, I'm going to give this person because they need help a tenth of my income. You might be doing what's called toxic giving. Your giving might actually be hurting them. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a reason why I would encourage people to trust a church or a nonprofit organization, a parachurch organization to help with giving because... There are all kinds of things that we look for when we try to help someone. And we do help people when they come to us in need. But when somebody is making really bad potential, and that's not everybody. I'm not saying that about this situation. I don't know, so I'm just giving context. When people are making bad financial decisions, when people have no way and have no desire to change their situation, and they come asking for help because they go, they're going to shut off my electric if we don't get that bill paid. Sometimes we help them. But a lot of times we ask them. Like, okay, you meet with somebody that we have at church. We, because if we just give you money to pay that bill, who's to say you're not going to be in the same situation next month asking, mm -hmm. I need somebody else to pay my bill? That's, sure. not, that's not a system that's actually helping them. They need better than that. They need yeah. counsel. They need care. They need a plan. We don't mind helping people when they're going through something and hurting, but we don't want to be about a part of toxic giving. Yeah. And there's yeah. plenty of it. So I'll just... Unless you have anything to say. I yeah, I mean, I think effect. it's a great question. Uh, and it's uh, honestly something I wrestled with when my kids were little. And I kind of had a moment where, you know, it was a month, I think a month where I, I met, a, met a need of another church. So I felt kind of off the hook for that month at my church. And then I, I thought about my kids and the amount of goldfish that they consume <laughs> uh, on Sunday mornings. And it was like this goldfish moment, like, wait a second, like... My, that my, costs money. My, right. I mean, it's, it's it's something simple and small, but it was just kind of a eye-opening for me. Like, who paid for the goldfish that my kids ate yeah. that week, you know? And I'll just end with saying, like, it's best to do both. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, give to your to your church home. And then? And then meet a need somewhere else. Do both. Yeah. And I think God blesses people who are generous beyond mm -hmm. that. The, the tithe is bringing it to God. Some people will even say it's not giving. I don't go that far because I feel like some people it's hard to rationalize, but Jesus, I mean, not just Jesus in the New Testament, but in the Old Testament, you just, the tithe belongs to the Lord. It's mm -hmm. actually bringing it to God. And anything beyond that, I think, is an act of generosity where you're giving, and you see that in the New Testament where they helped people in need. And so we will do that from time to time out of our own above that. And I think that's a beautiful thing. But we as a church want to help. So please yeah. let us know. Um, well, so, so, good. Uh, someone said, I want. Um, I don't know if we could really answer. I want to start my own business, but as someone who's never been a business owner, how do I get the money needed to start the business? Uh, yeah. It's, I feel like this one's, I'm going to be honest, this one's hard to answer. I don't know what your business is. If your business is selling product that you're developing and you're creating, it's going to take it. And there's all kinds of things from crowd fun, source funding, which you, you got to know what you're doing if you're going to mess around with that kind of thing. Um, I think that's the challenge some people have. I think you have to hit the pavement. You've got to figure out how to turn money early. Yeah. Is, is there a need for your business? Yeah. If it is, great. Yeah. You know, and then seek, I would seek the counsel of other business owners. 
yeah as well like it, it may be someone in the end is if it's an industry that's already there yeah you know if you're gonna become mm -hmm. a you know you're gonna own a gym well, go meet other gym owners yeah. how did you do it what did you start go see a bank about you know if you're gonna need a bank loan that sort of thing so yeah yeah i i didn't know if i wanted to ask this question or try to answer it i don't think i don't know what they would want me to say um or you guys this person said, I'm on disability and struggle with having enough to get by. Is it wrong to work under the table to have enough to be able to live comfortably? Hmm. Uh, but I want to just say, I'm sorry for your situation. That, that seems difficult. I really do. It's anybody that's struggling to have it. And I understand getting by today and with inflation and with food prices and everything, it's getting harder and harder, especially mm -hmm. if you're on a static income and you're on disability. Mm -hmm. I think that's really difficult. Um, I'm not going to recommend anything about, I guess the, the confusion I have is, as you say, if it, is it wrong to work under the table and the way I understand disability is if you are able to work, you would not collect disability. Mm. And so I'm, I'm not really sure what is ultimately being asked here, but I don't have an answer beyond, I just don't have an answer. I'm moving on. <laughs> I don't, I feel uncomfortable <laughs> asking this question. Yeah, I, say, I don't have an answer of saying if you couldn't work, we'd have to know this. If you can work, right but even in, either way, I mean, my, my overall general answer just from an ethical standpoint is if you can work then you should work yep. scripture would say and yeah. which would mean you wouldn't be getting disability and it would probably make it harder um potentially get by but i i can't i don't understand the context and is it a physical thing and you because some people have a real situation of i'm physically disabled i'm struggling to get disability from the state because of this but this happened to me and i can have a lot of empathy for someone that's in that situation mm -hmm. i just don't have any advice I can give. Yep. Okay, next one. If I'm given stock option in the tens of thousands from my company, I don't know where the rest of this question is going, but good for you. Good job. If you are. That is only a few years publicly available. So the company is only a few years public, I think, um, but still doing relatively well in the current market. Does it make sense to move some of that money into other markets to diversify and protect that money or leave it in the company stock? I'm thinking you might not be able to answer uh, I, this I'll, or unless I'll you can, because you, this seems like giving specific advice. And if you, well, I'll just give you a rule of thumb. That's all we'll I give like rule of thumbs. Okay. Um, five to 10% in one particular company is typically okay. Okay. But five to 10% uh, of your entire investment, your entire net worth, net like, worth. Yeah, yeah. Of your, of your, of your income, like what you have. Your investing yeah. net worth. Yeah. I mean, not your total yeah. net worth. Yeah, your, your, of your investment net worth. Investment net worth. Okay. Um, again, dependent on the company. There's a I, lot there. I don't know. know. That's why I have no idea what the company is. The company. I'm understanding that but they left that company. They've been given tens of thousands of dollars of stock from that company. They're probably still there. They're oh, okay. just getting right. options each right. year. They're probably okay. still there working for them. So it's, it's a way to incentivize yeah. highly compensated Well, I just people. didn't know if they had received um, it from working there and moved yeah. on because but, I didn't know why they wanted But you're getting into tax to... situations because they could be taxed when they're moving it, those sort of things. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot there. But See a professional. Um, I think your word earlier, diversification, is, is a really good word to kind of think about yeah that would be my only question is what percentage of this form of compensation is you know no, it's the company stock is what i'm reading it you're right, getting tens it, of thousands of that company sure but is there other comp other uh is there other compensation in other areas outside of just it, this? i mean typically the way a stock option is going to work is they're you know they're getting their salary yeah and they're plus. getting some match and 401k and all that stuff and this is a a stock option usually has like uh, mature, you know, hey, you got to invest, you know, after you like, be so you got to stay there three, five years some of or those more. things. So there's a lot, um, it, it, yeah. there's different types of stock yeah. options. Yeah. Too, so. But it doesn't replace a 401k. It's no, 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 no. In addition yeah. to. Usually that's what if I you're in an executive like, level, yeah, you're receiving they're a C -suite stock as part of your bonus or your salary, but it's above and beyond. Yeah. yeah they're a C-suite or a D-suite yeah, person. Uh, there, yeah. For sure. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think here's what I would just say. I really think you should, if you're in this situation, you need to go see a professional. Yeah, right, they need to look at your specifics. Yeah. That's what I would do. Um, how can you maximize a small 401k when you are already at retirement age of 65? I don't know. I mean, if you're, okay, so if you're at retirement age of 65, but you may not be retired. Right. If you're not retired, my recommendation would be hopefully your living expenses are low enough because you're at the point of near disability or, or sorry retirement mm -hmm. that you would be maximizing your 401k by putting as much in it as you can 
Right. Yeah. And if you're able to retire, I don't know what else you can do. I mean, I would say hopefully you're seeing a professional. They might move your investments if you have them in risky options into some safer ones. Mm -hmm. I would assume this person and whoever's doing their stuff would have already done that. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, and you're like the you, you're like the you said, financial like, planner. I'm just like you said. I'm a pastor. Just what do because I know? you are at retirement age doesn't mean you're, you're retired. able to retire. Or, yes. You you might not. You might be working longer too. I mean, that you, there's a lot of ways to answer this question. I mean, yeah. You know, if it's a small 401k, are you okay with living yeah. off of Social Security? You know, is that enough for you? And if it's not, you might yeah. want to. Yeah. Do you, you have know, any other keep, assets? Keep is your is your you live in a home? Is it paid for? Yeah. You I mean, need that home. There's, there's a, lot, a lot of things. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Um, just we'll move on because they had other pieces on this. Um, retirement is like a new concept in the last 60 years. Mm -hmm. Like people didn't retire. It didn't exist. So I think there's a little bit of an expectation in our society or culture today that you get to 65 and you should retire. Mm -hmm. I don't know that that needs to be an expectation. I mean, I think if, if that's what you want to do, then what you should be doing is when you're younger, meeting with a certified financial planner. And when I met with Kyle, the first thing he said to me is, here's a form to fill out. What are you trying to do? I, I, if you're going, I want to retire at 65, then you need to prepare for it. If you haven't, then I think there's this like thing in our culture that there's this magical thing about the age of 65, probably because of what Social Security used to be mm -hmm. when you could start collecting it. That all of a sudden you're 65 and I should retire. I, I, don't, I don't know that I'm retiring when I turn 65. I'm not saying from this, I might be doing something sure. different, but I, I want to work as long as I can because I find purpose in what I do. Again, this, mm -hmm. that's a tangent that has nothing to do. This is more about work. Yep. I'll move on. They said this, when can you take 401k IRA distributions with the least tax burden? I'd say probably when you aren't making other income would be your least tax burden, when you're in the lowest tax bracket. It begins at, to, there depends. If you leave your employer after 55, you might be able to take, uh, yeah. Uh, no penalty no distribution. Penalty. Yeah. 59 and a half is the magical age for everyone. Yep. And then, uh, like you said, the least tax is going to be when I'm done working and, and yep. I'm using that as, a, as an income typ typically. Depends on what you're yeah. getting. getting okay. well. so, yeah. Advice on trust. That's all they said. We don't... Uh, they're good. I would say how I'd answer this question is... is uh, just make sure your beneficiaries are aligned. Yeah. Anything, uh, all a trust, uh, most of what, there's revocable and irrevocable trust. There's a lot yeah. of ways you could go with this. Yeah. But I think typically when people are asking this question, it's like, I want to make sure that mm -hmm. money that I have saved, if something were to happen to me, goes to the people that I want to make sure it goes yeah. to with the least amount of nuisance and the least amount of taxation as possible. A trust would protect a person's assets from going to probate. Yeah. Um, Okay. You, you know, pro, probate isn't. You don't want probate bad. to deal with your your uh, estate. Probate's a thing. It's but just it's, not a good I call thing. it, you know, I spoke earlier, yeah. the four P's of probate. It's prolonged, takes a while, it's pricey. They're going to take some money, money from your assets. It's it's a pain in the butt. And it's public record so that people can go in and see okay. what you have. So, yeah. And you don't want to be messing with that when you might be grieving a loved one, too. Yeah. Sure. You know, yeah. that's yeah. The, it's one you're, less thing you're preparing to worry about. ahead yeah. of time. Uh, the, let's just go through some of these quick because I've, I've got a few more and it's I want to just get th us through them. You guys might have different perspective. What is the best life insurance plan to invest in when you are in your mid thirties term or whole life? I'm a term person. Term. I, Dave Ramsey says never do whole, always do term unless you guys have a different perspective. Uh, term. Is are you a term person or whole? Same term. Yeah. Dave Ramsey, I, I know just because I follow him and all this, he always tells people, he says, whole is the biggest scam. There is. I mean, I don't know if that's true. I, I just, I've always just been encouraged that term is the best. Um, now, I will say, when you are at a certain age, your 30s, um, it, it can usually, when I got my last term life insurance, I got it a 30-year one to try to cover me into my 60s. As far as I could, because you got to understand, you reach certain ages, it's going to go up. Mm -hmm. But you re it, how long it is, it's going to go up. Your health. So I think it's probably good to reassess that in your 30s, your 40s, other things. As long as you're in good health, when is a good time to do it? I, I tried to get term insurance for me and my wife that would go all the way up to, quote, unquote, retirement age. With the goal of we 
don't have a house payment or if we don't want to, we don't have right. one. We're in a good enough financial place that we may not continue on life insurance at that point that you've prepared for if something happens everybody's taken care of. Well, I think that's to smart. Me, that's, to me, that I mean, would be that, the goal. Because yep. when you bought the term, your, you know, your net worth was here, and yep. the term like covers that gap. Exactly. In the meantime, over that 30-year period, your you, money has been growing to where that gap is yeah. now hopefully gone yep. by, the time, by the time you reach your 30-year that mark. That's, so goal. that's perfect. Well done. Uh, how should we invest? Oh, no. Oh, man. I just need to check on something. Um, is it recording? Let me just ask. They have a default set for uh, at a certain time that the stuff shuts down. <laughs> and I just, I'm just trying to make sure everything's still shutting down. 5.05, it's uh, uh, shutting five down. Five. We're at 5 o'clock. Lydia, are we still okay? So let me know. Uh, we'll keep moving, if so. Um, waiting for her to tell me. I, hopefully it's just some <clears> of the <throat> stuff out here. And it looks like it's... Yeah, still recording. Good. Okay. How should we invest wisely with the current state of the economy? Get you a professional. Sorry, I, I was, know Jared. Doesn't. I would say diversify. Diversify. Yep. Yeah. In okay. dollar cost averaging, it's it's not dropping a lump sum in all at once. It's putting a little bit in each month. Okay. Well, let's move on. These are good. Should you sell your house now to get positive equity, even in the highest interest loan market? Where are you going to buy one? I, yeah. I, to me, it's. Yeah. Robbing Peter to pay Paul. You mm -hmm. you sell now because you get all the equity. If you're not going to buy another house, yeah. then maybe mm -hmm. it's a good time to do it. But typically real estate is fine to stay in. You're what I'm gonna say is even as the interest rates come down, inflation is being adjusted for and that usually your house value is probably not gonna drop significantly. Mm -hmm. Might a little bit, but I just yeah, what are you going to do? You're going to pay move, for it on the other end. Right. You get more moving now and you pay. You're going to pay someone else. Yeah, moving is expensive. You know, if it's a, if it's a, if you want to live somewhere else, maybe, but yeah. if it's yeah. just to create the equity. Nah. Yeah. I, and I have an incredible interest rate of mine. I would not want to lose that in right, this right, market, right. to be honest. That's what I'd tell you. But uh, what is the best way to save money? I make really good money. Good for you. Awesome. But I have an issue with spending. Like it's like I get paid Friday and I'm broke by Monday. Okay. I, Budget. We we've, we've, budget. I, I feel like we've answered that. I just think budget and being really intentional with saving um, so that you force yourself to live on what's left. I, I always said it on Sunday. I give to God first. And then after that, I want to pay myself. Yep. And then beyond that, I'm going to live on what's last, left. Mm -hmm. And some people yep. say the 10, 10, 80. Um, I've sometimes taught the 10, 20, 70 rule. And it's more about savings. If you can get your savings to 20%, I would mm -hmm. encourage you to do that. Um, I just you need a budget, yeah. bro. Yeah, Sis. and it is whoever so you are. If you're making a lot of money, spend. it is. It is. It is easy. so it is. easy. It's we gonna take work. Yeah, you have to say no. I always tell people you're gonna have to say no. Yeah, you're gonna have to say no a lot. And yeah. when you think you're doing a great job saying no, <laughs> you need to say no more. Say no, <laughs> so you can and, say yes but, but to things what, you love. I always the phrase yeah. I always like to use. I've used this over and over for years. It's not no. It's not now. Right. Mm -hmm. The answer it's, is not no. It's not now. I want to do that. that. That's our biggest See, struggle. Is we want we it want it now. Right now, the yeah. microwave yes. yeah. society. We yeah. want it. We want it today. Okay. Uh, this person asked practical financial advice tips for young adults starting out on their own. I feel like we answered that. Yeah. I'm going to skip that one. Yeah. We we talked about college student. We talked about this. I think. Okay. So I'm just reading. I just want to. Here's someone who says I have a daughter who starts college this summer and saved nothing. Well, you sound like you're throwing your daughter under the bus. Um, <laughs> what is the best way to help now that I will have some extra money? In other words, maybe you're, you don't, you're not paying for her. Maybe that's why. Um, save cash and pay the school directly, or do I put money into a college savings account? What's the best way to help now that I will have some extra money, save cash and pay the school directly, or put money into a college savings account? I feel like at this point, putting money into solid college savings account yes, is pointless. Not gonna you're not going to make anything. Yeah. On it, I wouldn't bother with the hassle and dealing with that. I would probably pay the school directly. It sounds this. like they're helping their daughter. Or we hit on this earlier. You pick a good school, pick an appropriate. Oh, price. they're saying they haven't saved anything for their that daughter's college, and they want to help pay yeah. for it. And so if you can, just I would pick a good school that 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 is the appropriate cost. Like yeah, we, we talked about this earlier. You know, or or do they defer a year and work for yeah. it? You know, I mean, there's lots of ways. Or what. 
Is it a trade? Tell, you know tell them I mean? go into the military. Yeah, I mean that's yeah, what I sent my daughter. Military. I said, do you want to yeah. want to go? Yeah. I'll help pay for your school. You go to the military, and I'll use yeah. the Montgomery GI Bill to pay for it. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't do that, but that was her own choice. But and, yeah, and, and be careful not to get hooked by merit based scholarships. I mean, it's it's a way these colleges try to mm-hmm. give you enough of an incentive to pick their school without, you know maximizing the amount you spend for that school yeah so, okay yeah. yeah i i uh i think the hardest thing when you're a parent in this position is that every kid in high school coming out and all their friends because this is again the way the mm-hmm. kind of well they're going to go to that they're looking at this and they're going on college visits to all these and they're going to look at these colleges that are out of state mm-hmm. And so you're know, like, yeah, but out of state means it's really expensive, yeah. you know? And, and so to have those conversations with your kids and go, look, I want to help, but we're going to have to pick something that's, that's affordable. There's a ton yeah, of or scholarship you money can, out there too. Yeah, I mean, there if they is. really want to, I mean, yeah. my daughter, we've, we've got, she's probably been, you know, I'm been proud of her. She's probably been three or four scholarships a week just applying for them and she's gotten some and and um she's doing the work to get it she's I, yes. it's like a part-time job we've kind of called her, her yeah, little good job, so. okay my we're almost done my husband and i just found out we were expecting our first child in october congratulations, so congratulations. your life Wait. is about to change let me just say that yes. how much should we put aside a month to set our child up for college is 529 account the best option or is there something you recommend more I don't know how to answer that. So, so if you live in Ohio, uh, an Ohio 529 is one of the best 529s available. There you go. And with the recent changes to this, the Secure Act, you can now, you know, the big, biggest hang up with 529s was I don't know if my my child's going to go to college, right? Or what if they go to trade school? Well, they've really loosened the restrictions of a 529. In fact, if they decide not to at all, you can take that money and and move it into a Roth for for your child. So this, and that, I think there's a 15 year uh, time. Has to be open that time frame. Has to be open at least 15 years. So open one right away. Yeah. That um, does count as contribution. There's some it little nuances with yeah. it. it. You know, you can't just like dump it all in there right. yeah. Yeah. at the end. So there are some nuances with it. But yeah. I use an Ohio 529. They're great. Um, I, For the, the state tax I, reduction. Here's what, here's what I want to say. The only, the only, can I throw in a caveat? The only mm-hmm. caveat I would give. And, and what you're saying, though, really changed that, though. That really did. Um, <laughs> when you put it in Ohio 529, uh, it's a tax benefit for doing that. Um, it needs to be used for school or some trade version. Otherwise, you're going to pay a penalty if you take mm-hmm. it out unless you move it into an IRA for them or something. Mm-hmm. And so the, the, your every situation could be different. Your kid may go, I don't ever want to go to college. You, then you can move it into something else. Or if you wanted to or use sibling, it, yeah. if you wanted to, they wanted or you wanted them to be able to use it for something else, then you're going to pay a penalty on it. Mm-hmm. They want to be able to, what if they want to be able to use it for a down payment on a house? Yeah. What if they, there you know, are custodial accounts. So you could do like yeah, a 529 so, and a custodial account, and you could have your own joint couple account where you're also like, we'll use this for the, for our child, but for kind of anything. So you could, do a little bit of all. Yeah. You so I just have to like pick one yeah. or the other. You could kind of take I, a multi-faceted approach to it. It works. Can work really well. Yeah. I think. I think again, these are where I. I do think that there are some people, and maybe like you, Kyle. I don't know if people come to you asking about high five twenty nine because I think there's other things. I can invest with an, an account that you that has a similar like. I mean, I what I'm saying is you could get the same kind of growth. In an account that does not have now, it's not, probably not going to be a tax Won't deferred. Be tax free it's not going to be tax, tax free, deferred, right? But the money it could be. So, in other words, you could put it in a well. You don't want to put it Roth because then you don't get access to it. Well, yeah, you, there's each account has a little yeah. stipulation. Yeah. Right? A little I got you know the five twenty nine. Yeah, that'd be used for a college, but yeah. it's tax free. Tax free of it is. Yeah, you've got an individual or a joint account where you can invest it for whatever you want. It's going to be taxable as you go, but you can use it for whatever. You can you use want. it not without a penalty. So it, you know, it's yeah. Way in the cost. It's just hard to know because we put money into Ohio 529 in both of our daughters, and so we're we're doing some other things with it. Both of our daughters end up one got scholarships that completely covered her college, and the other one joined the Air National Guard and has all kinds of money from the military to help pay it. And so you, I'm just saying you never know what situation. So yeah. I think it is good that you are thinking, and if you yeah. have an ability, here's what I found. So I tell somebody, and I try to give. Them, I found it's really hard to save for your kid's college in today's environment. Because when your kid, and you start now, when your kid in 
five or six years old wants to play this sport and this sport, and then you all of a sudden are paying hundreds of dollars. Right. Hundreds of dollars. My daughter was... Jared, you had a golfer, right? Yeah, I mean, I... I, I, I you know what I'm look, saying. I like, love it's the, really hard. I love the spirit of the question, but a lot of financial advisors that I listen to or, or podcasts that I listen to, yeah. uh, paying for your kid's college is further down in the order of yeah. operation. Right, yeah. You've got to look out for yourself first. You only have so much time. The analogy. Yeah. Yeah. The analogy look out for yourself. <laughs> Let them, you know, when you get on an airplane, they say yeah. put the oxygen mask on, on yourself first. You know, there first. you go. So I, that's make, what I'm are, saying. Is it's, your financial house in order? If your financial house in order, absolutely. Then maybe you might it, look at the kids. At one, but, but don't look at the kids before your own house because yeah. then you're just going to rob from your house yeah. to pay for your exactly. kids later on. I mean, You'll that's, be that's struggling the, at retirement right. age. And right. one of the things that I, I remember, and I got one last question, and if we have anything you want to say, um, at one time when my daughter was doing literally like full-time gymnastics, she was homeschooling. I mean, she was kind of on a track to, she was in the top 100 or so of, in the country for her age. And she was like, oh, you know, you, at that time you're like, I want to do this in college Olympics and all that stuff. What you have to understand is any of these athletes that are at the highest level that do participate in college, their parents paid an entire college tuition mm -hmm. during mm -hmm. their entire childhood. Right. Yeah. I'm right. not, I'm not joking when I was like one year I added up and I think it was between like nine and $10,000 for all of the training, the travel, the tournaments, the Leah's, all of this. That was like nine to 10,000 for that one year, hmm. close to that. And I'm like, I'm paying a college tuition and right. you're eight years old. <laughs> you better get a scholarship if you do this all the way and to the end. Because the one percent chance there, oh, of you being know, that and athlete. There are, right? And there are, there right. are parents that I know of who their, their kids had done these kind of athletic adventures or you know all the way up and then they're junior or senior high school and go i quit i don't want to do it i'm so burned out and you just paid a college <laughs> tuition and yeah. then some and then they're like i'm going to college do you have any money you go i could not afford to save for your college because i was paying for your jared's well, son yes. though is going to be tiger Woods. well, well that's or, happening. or, that or happening. my fear is my son it's plays in college but he gets an partial scholarship yeah, to a division really, three school yeah, right, where it's right, going right. to cost me 50 grand a year for him to play golf. That's my fear. Yeah. So, and that ain't happening. And he knows that. Yeah. So there you go. You got to make some so, choices. Yeah. Uh, last question we got was with cost of living so much, what does it take financially to feel secure during times like this? Uh, help me with savings and getting ahead for once. I, I think we go back to the emergency fund that, yeah. that margin that yeah. you create. I mean, yeah. Every everybody feels it now. I mean, whether you were came in with great financial position or you came in not so great financial position. I mean, we go to the grocery store; it's more expensive. We yeah. we get gas; it's more expensive. Yeah. The the level of margin that a that a a fully funded emergency fund can get to get you to is is just it's it's great. So yeah. as we said yesterday, and as we've talked about today, like you know, work towards that. Build your emergency work fund. Towards that emergency fund. It, it, it puts you in a really, yeah, really valuable and spot. And if you're really worried, start paying off any debt you have. Yeah. I think that is the yeah. biggest Being thing for me. Yeah. Debt freedom Bring mostly debt free. Is, you have, um, might have yeah. your house, but make sure your assets are yeah. covering your debt. Yeah. You know, your equity is covering your debt on your stuff. Don't have consumer debt. Yeah. Um, yeah, I went with that assumption. I should, should no. not have assumed. Well, no, no, but, yeah, I, yeah, I, but yeah. I agree. Yeah. What you're saying is I continue to build my emergency fund. There will come a point where maybe I'll, I don't know where it is. When you get to that point of going, I got this in there. Mm -hmm. I feel comfortable. I should probably stop and start putting it into more investment stuff. Yeah. I agree with yeah. what you said yesterday. Yeah. Um, but it, it, yeah, that's, I think that's good advice. Um, I know you had a couple other things. Do, do you want to just mention them or do you feel like we covered a lot? I mean, we talked about someone asked about 55 and haven't saved for retirement. I mean, that's where you have to figure out how to get aggressive. Yeah. And don't also assume you need to retire at 62 or 65. Yeah. If you stay, I would say pay attention to your health. Keep your yeah. body and your mind and your everything healthy so that you can work. Like, you, you have to take mm -hmm. care of yourself. You can't just live in some world where there's a magical age and I reach this age and what am I going to do? I don't have retirement. Well, you're going to keep working. That's that's a reality we, for we a lot of people. We talk about encore careers too. Yeah, you know, like yeah. okay, I'm gonna retire. Yeah, this person might say, okay, I'm gonna keep working for another 10, 12 years, but then doesn't mean when you retire from the real job, yeah. quote unquote, yeah. real job, you can't go to the next job and do something else. I mean, gosh, there's so much you can do. I mean, uh, there double the, dip. Uh, that that demographic of. 65 plus that's staying in the workforce is is growing it's just changing where it's going they're not in their nine to five maybe yeah. they were before that they're moving it's 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 awesome 
Yeah, and there are some options available later in retirement to to kind of play catch up. Yeah, where mm-hmm. they loosen the rules a little bit. Yeah, they do based on your up. age. Yeah, yeah. I also think double dipping, like what you're saying, what some people call it, is like let's say you can reach a certain age to start. First of all, pay attention to when you can start. If you paid into Social Security, when you can start collecting it. I've talked to numerous people that were not aware that they could start collecting social, or their spouse did, and they didn't realize they could. And so they're a year, two years late going, I could have been collecting Social Security all this time. Mm-hmm. So you can do that. If, if you worked for a company yeah, be, and you get retirement, you can retire from that company and then do what you said as an encore career. You might start be able to, if you're of age, co- start collecting that retirement right, okay. while working in another yeah. job and putting more and more money away into retirement. So b- well doubling said. up. Well said. Yeah. Sorry. No, just, I was just saying like 62 to 67 is typically that. Yeah. If I'm making an income, I don't probably want to take my social security because you get correct there a comes a bit. point where you can't but like what you're saying is wonderful like 67 to you know you might Seven. actually take your social security and then go do that other job it's a great way to save because the rules are a little looser mm-hmm. on what you can yeah. save and how much you can save so well said um i think we talked about kids and money right i feel like we did unless uh, there was something uh, particular. maybe little kids like i think there's you could talk about allowance you could talk about earning oh. your money I know that's a, a sensitive one for you. Um, <laughs> I'm against allowances. I'm going to say it right here and we can move on. Well, the one thing I would Make encourage people to do with uh, allow with their kids that oftentimes they don't is allow them to make yeah. mistakes with their money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Allow them to spend money on things you don't yeah. want, you don't think yeah. is a good idea so yeah. that they can learn from those. I, I think you should yeah. teach them to save for a purpose. Allow your kids to realize they have money that they're saving, and if they really want to buy something, let them. Otherwise, they're going to hate saving money, yep. and I am against giving allowances. I My parents taught me this. You Again, we can all disagree, but there's just no free – no one's giving you a free allowance once you graduate, once you move out of the house. And so they just – like there was a list of jobs and chores. They all had a value on them if you want to make some money. I did this with my youngest daughter. I gave her at one point a contract. She signed it. You want to make money, the first thing you do is you're going to make your bed every day. You make your bed, you get a money. We're going to go and check it. You check it off the list. Like, do something love like it. that. Yeah. Is that a little extreme? Uh, no, I love no it. but, I'm, but I'm, I want to teach them to work. And so what it helped me was my parents are like, you could make like 20 to $30 this week mm-hmm. if you want to work. Mm-hmm. If you don't want to work, you ain't going to make any money. You won't have any money to spend. They're teaching me, I think, a really important principle yeah. in life. Not it does money doesn't just get handed out to you. Mm-hmm. You better go earn it, and that's why I've been against because I've seen that taught to me that I'm yeah. just so against the idea of like, oh, you're living here's twenty dollars. <laughs> One other thing, embrace that entrepreneur um, yeah. mindset. Like Help them. sometimes they just they're so naive they think they can do take this and, and make money with it. And there's a party that's like that's crazy. You're gonna go sit there and do this and that. Let them explore that. And yep. who knows, they might return yep. uh, with some cash. Yeah. It's yeah. awesome. I think um, other things we talked about on here, crypto, both of you guys said you have not a lot of problem of investing in crypto. No, it's, it's a real thing, but, but it should be a very small, small percent amount. of your small portfolio. Percent. Yeah. Maybe five yeah. of your portfolio. Maybe. Something you can lose. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, you can win big with it. Sure. It, it, it moves mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. Right? And I mean, Bitcoin the bottom fell out last year or two ago and, the, and now it's back and up it skyrocketed so and so what happens is right you invest in it the bottom falls out oh and you get you out sell. and then you sell after yeah, you've lost time. a bunch and then the next year it's back up and you go oh, dear what did i do what did i do um um i want to skip this because we already talked about an advisor the last thing is and then i'm going to close this out credit cards and points someone like dave ramsey is against credit cards all three of us at the table are not against credit cards we're, we're for discipline, we're for paying off your credit cards, but we are also for the points. Yes. Yes. I, I, here's what I'd say. If you struggle with debt, I would not play with credit cards and points. Mm. If you don't struggle with debt and you're disciplined with a budget, then you could use a credit card wisely. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think for, for normal everyday expenses, I think it's, it's a good choice. I. I do think the credit card companies know what they're doing. It is a bit calculated, so you might, in the back of your head, might be thinking, oh, but I'm earning 5% cash back or 2% cash back and end up spending 3% or 6% yeah. more. Mm-hmm. So you have to be very, very careful. Um, but it can be, you know, for us, it goes into a, it goes into a, a fund that we can later spend on 
something maybe a little reckless because it's right. free money. Free money. It's free money. Yeah. 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 I think it's great. I yeah. I do think with credit cards, there's a variety. We actually have a credit card that we pay an annual fee on. But the return for covering travel expenses mm -hmm. is so good. Mm -hmm. I literally claim back hundreds, mm -hmm. hundreds of dollars mm -hmm. that I get um, toward, and I put it toward the balance. Yeah. That's what I do with it, that people do different things. Um, but one of the things my wife and I started off doing in a kind of an agreement to kind of like learn and make sure your finances are in order, we had a credit card. The only thing we used our credit card for was the um, gas. Mm -hmm. because we go to the pump and we didn't want to go in and you could probably use debit cards and all that now, but yeah. we didn't, you know, back then. And so we just did that. It's kind of expanded over the years at times. We've kind of caught ourselves going, Oh my gosh, you realize we spent this much. Um, and so we, you know, I always have the money to cover it, but it can get you in trouble. You can real fast, not realize, especially if you have a family and your spouse and, you know, and you're, all not operating on a budget, mm -hmm. you can just start spending money and yeah. get yourself in trouble. So be careful. I think we'd all agree here at this table, though, if you've got a struggle with spending right now, don't, not the time. Don't to use, use a credit, credit card. card. You yeah. you need to have get, get some wins under your belt, yeah. and then if you want to test it, I think the way you did it was awesome. You know, yeah. just oh well, let's start out with gas. Yeah. you know, yeah. And, so make and sure that we're good because no one spends extra on gas because they yeah. you know you you don't have a spending problem with yeah. gas. It's a necessary you expense. Have, you have to get it. Yeah. yeah, someone I was helping recently switched to debit card for everything. And it was so easy to help help them because yeah. it was all coming from one place. Yeah. And if that's where you need to start, that's it a great easy. place to start. It's like yeah. a cash model with envelopes. Yeah. Yeah, There's a reason for right it's out. easy yeah. and you can see it. I do think so. we talked about budget and just hitting on cash for just a minute. I One thing that we did when we were in that debt, get out of debt journey is our, one of our biggest expenses was was, was restaurants going, going mm -hmm. out to eat. So I would... I would get at the beginning of the month, I'd get out the cash that we had budgeted to spend at yep. the restaurant and it, it did work. I mean, you know, I wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't throw cash to the side completely. I, we didn't do that yep. for, that was really the only category that we did it for. But um, you get to the 25th of the month and you're like, the cash is gone. We're not going out to eat. Right. We don't worry in the home yeah. the rest that, of the week. It teaches week. you so to say it no. It does teach you to say no. Yep. And uh, there's a really cool story it's a boring study probably, but it's an interesting study that uh, I think it was MIT or maybe RIT, one of the institutes mm -hmm. of technology did a study that like when you pay with card, there's not much in the pain receptors that go off mm. in your brain. But when you, when you throw cash down, you know, if you give them a 50 and they bring back a 10, the pain receptors in your brain were like, ouch, mm. that hurt. And they actually said with these guys, the phones, it doesn't even register on the well, pain receptors. I like, could give you a counter to that. Yeah. But I want us to wrap up. Oh, yeah. I want to okay. respect your time. The, I will give you the quick counter to that. Um, I ran into this with my daughter mm -hmm. and a little bit my wife, but mostly my daughter, one of them. That's not how a certain generation sees it. Mm -hmm. A generation that's only grown up in digital, mm -hmm. okay, never experienced cash. Mm -hmm. um, I was talking to her, and um, the way is like, I want to say it's like girl math, yeah. but what she saw was if it's cash, it's free money mm. because it's not in my account. And she had money yeah, from yeah. like something she had from it, like okay. graduation and she didn't realize that she had all this money. And she'd come back and she'd go, I got all this money. It's free money. And I'm like, no, this is your money. And she's like, Why don't you put it in the, well, cause I can spend it on whatever. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't, she didn't feel the pain receptors going off with cash. So I'm because old. Everything, is that you said? I'm old. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm old. just saying okay. she, just, I'm just saying there's almost a different perspective <laughs> mm, than the younger true. generation yeah. who only knows they got a checking account early. They got money that's there. It's a digital currency thing. And so cash for them is play yeah. money. Yeah. And so I don't know if Dave Ramsey's method works with the Gen yeah. Z right now. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, a debit, card, a debit card did re register on the pain receptors because you actually had an account that it was yes. from. So, yes. And so, so debit card so did. Debit it was did. like, oh, I got to pay with debit cards. It's terrible. But if yeah. I had to pay with cash, it's yeah. nothing. It's free money. I was like, honey, what? And we had this conversation one night and I could not, we were just going back and forth and like, no, no, it's free money because it's already out of my account. It's still in your hands. It's real money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was like, no, it's free money because that's what it might, I have is my account. I'm like, whoa, okay. So I, that's funny. Yeah. I thought girl math was, hey, dad, this hairspray is $40 on Amazon, but they have it at TJ Maxx for 20. Should I buy it? It's free money. It's $20, yeah, $20 free money. Yeah. $20 free money. No, there's all <laughs> kinds of things. But I found out there was a whole other level of this I didn't know. So, yeah. well, thank you Good guys stuff. for being on there. I know we had a ton of questions. Yeah. I feel like we at least honored. We did them all. There's one or two that we, we didn't just because we thought they would be awkward to try to answer on here. But in longer conversations, maybe we'll have another mm -hmm. time on the podcast. But thank you guys. 
Thanks yeah, for lending your wisdom. Financial freedom is coming this up. Sat- well, it'll be, it'll be, this little episode will come out Friday, so it'll be the next day. But I'll say it's not too come late. Out. Come out uh, for it, and um, we already have a huge, I mean, I think it's almost up to 70 yeah. Yeah. people. It's going to be great. It's, it's going to be awesome, incredible. So thank you guys so much for just your investment in our community here and for sharing, and hopefully anything we said. Listen, if you have something that you're like, uh, that's, I don't agree with that. That's fine. We don't all have to agree. We don't all agree on everything here. You, you're welcome to send in a, a comment. You're welcome to send an email podcast at the X dot church. And we'll, we'll be glad to entertain that. But I would encourage you like these guys are really, they're really good with their finances. They're really smart. Um, Kyle works in this industry full time. We have financial coaches. Jared, be happy to, I think to coach Yeah, and mm-hmm. Jared. So if you, you you would like a financial coach, Jared would be happy to. I know Kyle's done it some, and probably depends on your schedule, and we've got other people, but we're here to help as a, mm-hmm. as a church. Absolutely. And so, Thanks for tackling this topic, too. Oh. Yeah, this series has been great. Good. So if, if you're listening to this and yeah. haven't listened to the series, go yeah. back. I mean, yeah, and we, I've been a part one, of this church for a long time, and this was definitely a different spin on it. Yeah, yeah. We, I love we, we did a little different. I loved, I loved it. Straight. I thought it was great. Yep. So anyways, well, thank you if you stuck with us for this hour and a half long episode on money and finances. And if you got bored, sorry. But if you wanted to hear your question answered, you had to stick through the end. Uh, Thanks for joining us as always, and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Until then, have a great day. Hey, guys, it's Russ. Thanks so much for listening. We really believe if we can get around tables instead of behind screens, if we can talk to each other instead of at each other, we can make the world better. To help us do that, here are a few things you can do to help. First, if you haven't yet, leave a review on Apple or Spotify and hit subscribe on YouTube. This helps more than you know. Also, if you have been impacted by the community out of which this podcast comes, that's X Church. Maybe you're local or you've been touched by the messages and impact across the country, even the world. I want to encourage you to support this work. A powerful life principle is to invest in the people and places that invest in you. And so I want to invite you to do that right now by going to the X.Church slash give. You can give a one-time small gift, a sacrificial gift, or even become a recurring partner. Together, let's keep elevating the conversation, thinking higher, loving deeper, and making the world better. Cheers.